Hello and welcome. You're watching France 24's Tech Show, coming up for you today. The 70th edition of the Cannes Film Festival has opened under sunny French Riviera skies, but a brewing storm over Netflix's place at the world's most prestigious film event has stolen the spotlight. We'll tell you why shortly. Plus, in the second part of the show, we'll take a look at what tech entrepreneurs are doing to help rid oceans of plastic waste. We'll also demonstrate how you can transform a plastic cap into another useful product thanks to a 3D printer by French startup 3DMS. But first, France is celebrating the 70th edition of the famous Cannes Film Festival. But controversy has dodged its opening day after two Netflix releases were selected for its Palme d'Or competition, two films that won't be coming out in French cinemas. Some praised the move as a way to welcome the future of films, but it also prompted fierce opposition from the French movie industry, as Olivia Salazar Winspear explains. When it comes to watching films, the options for where to do it are limitless on a plane, on your laptop, or even on your phone. But what about the old-fashioned way, that is, in a cinema? My colleagues and I try to go to the cinema two or three times a month to see the new releases. Otherwise, I watch films on TV at home or on demand. If it's a film with my children, I will go to the cinema because I want them to learn about the pleasure of seeing something on the big screen, the quality of the images, and the patience required to watch a film until the end. When my friends say, let's go to the movies, I say, OK. Otherwise, I prefer to watch films on the sofa chilled out of my PJs. I can choose the film, stop in the middle, start again. She's not the only one. Home streaming services are increasingly popular, and now their products have hit the red carpet. I took nature and science, and I synthesized. Bong Joon-ho's Okja is one of two features in competition at Cannes, funded by Netflix. The films have sparked controversy because they're not getting a theatrical release here in France. Ken will continue to program films that they believe to be the greatest films in the world. And those films may come to them differently than they used to. The audience is changing, therefore distribution changes. Yet this goes against the French protocol, which says that films are released in cinemas first and only on streaming services three years later. Union representatives say they're prepared to compromise, but that cultural differences must be respected. The audiovisual limitations here must change. We agree they should change, but they need to get around the table with us and discuss it. They can't be so obstinate about it. They can't take hostages like this. Netflix is the stowaway at this festival, and that's unacceptable for French cinema operators. The feeling among many film industry insiders is that even if Netflix and its competitors produce high-quality productions, a laptop can never compete with the big screen experience. It's a strong and angry defense of cinema going, which is what the Cannes Film Festival is all about. Over five trillion pieces of plastic currently litter the ocean, making it one of the biggest environmental challenges of the century. And what's becoming clear is that current recycling methods aren't that effective. Take this figure, for instance. In 2012, the EU produced 57 million tons of plastic, of which only 6.6 .6 million tons were recycled. The rest, known as mixed plastic waste, was landfilled, incinerated for its energy, or discarded. Well, for more on how the tech industry is finding ways to tackle this problem, I'm now joined by Adrian Howarth, the Marketing and Sales Director of Recycling Technologies, based in the UK. Thanks so much for joining us here on Tech24. Hi, Julian. Your company has created a system which is able to recycle so-called mixed plastic waste. Uh, but before you tell us more about that, could you first explain to our viewers uh, what are the biggest challenges linked to recycling plastic in particular? Well, the, the, the greatest challenge really is getting the plastic in the form uh, that, that can be recycled, separated from the rest of the waste stream, and then taking the plastic uh, uh, and removing from it the additives that have been added during the process. Uh, it is also uh, uh, critical that we can separate some of some of the plastics, uh, for instance, PVC, uh, which have uh, uh, chlorine, etc., in them, which affect the output. And now let's talk about the recycling machine your, your company created. How does it work and why is it so groundbreaking? Well, the, the key, a lot of people have, have tried uh, uh, the thermal uh, chemical recycling of plastics. Uh, the key for us is uh, to have a modularized system uh, that keeps the price down as we intend to mass manufacture, 
to have that system easily transportable and supportable and take it to the plastic. So we will take our equipment and install it at the sites where the plastic currently exists, typically municipal recycling facilities. Because moving plastic is an expensive process, it being very light and difficult to handle. Uh, and, and therefore, we'll be the first people that, rather than trying to build a large centralised refinery, will have a modularised and distributed system and we expect to be able to uh, uh, dis dis place this uh, equipment worldwide. And now this machine that you created is pretty much as big as a tennis court. Uh, how do you intend to make it operate on high seas? Well, it, actually, the machine itself uh, is, is uh, less uh, floor space than, than a uh, tennis court. We have an, an area that's set aside by, beside it to carry the dried, treated plastic for the feedstock. Uh, we would see that uh, this on board a, a ship eventually would be stored uh, within uh, uh, the decks, uh, uh, under the decks. Uh, and all we would need on the top would be literally space for the, the, the footprint of about three isoferrate containers. And people already are drawing up designs for this. Well, thank you so much, Adrian Howarth, for speaking to us. Thank you. That was the Sales and Marketing Director of Recycling Technologies. And joining me now on set is Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. You're going to tell us about another extraordinary experience or project. Uh, it's, the, its name is pretty straightforward. It's the Ocean Cleanup, and many of our viewers probably have heard of it already. It's true. It's, it, the idea is very simple. What this uh, project entails to do is send a giant floating barrier. Uh, currently, the pilot project, which is uh, being tested, it has a barrier that extends up to 1.5 kilometers. So this floating barrier is placed in that part of the ocean where because of the swirling currents and because of the uh, wind currents as well, the plastic waste gets automatically attracted. So because of the currents, it gets deposited in a certain area in oceans. So that's where they will be placing these uh, long barriers. And the idea is that as the plastic moves in, these barriers will stop them at that point and then eventually they will be collected on the platform and then transferred to a ship, which will be then uh, sent, to, sent to the shore for recycling. So the anchorage will be done in those areas which are called gyres, which are uh, natural, uh, natural spots created because of the swirling currents. Now, interestingly, this startup has been founded, uh, it was founded rather six years ago by the then 17-year-old Boyan Slat. So That's it's so young. This, yeah, the story is quite extraordinary that for someone as young as uh, Boyan to have come up with the idea, and not only that, but to have pursued the idea and then made it into something concrete. So maybe this company can get in touch with recycling technologies that we just spoke to. Absolutely, and both of them, if you see what they are doing, they are complementary to each other. Now, before I end, I must mention and talk about the enormity of the problem, the problem of plastic waste in the oceans. It's not specific to a particular ocean, it's across the world. And just to give you an example, there is this Great Pacific garbage patch, which is located between the western coast of North America and Japan. And just to understand how much plastic is present in this patch, scientists found out that one single square kilometer contains 750,000 bits of microplastic. So microplastic is that form which gets shredded because of sun or, or because of the uh, currents as well. So that, that's the density of plastic that's present in some parts of the ocean, which is badly affecting, obviously, the marine life as well. Right. So it's high time that we come up with such innovative solutions in order to rid our oceans from plastic waste. Right, and some say it's even the sixth continent in the world, this huge pile of plastic in uh, the oceans. Thank you so much, Dan. We're going to move on now to Test 24 for more recycling. Now that we've seen what entrepreneurs are doing to rid oceans of plastic waste on a world scale, let's see what you can do locally with this machine, Dan. It's called EcoSet. That's right. It's one part of the entire system that's been manufactured by the French startup 3D Modular System. Now, the EcoSet you mentioned, it starts with this uh, shredder. Uh, it's essentially what it does is it shreds uh, the plastic caps. Now, the only plastic that is used in this machine, I have to say, is the one made of high-density polyethylene. So the bottle caps which you see, that you can see here, they are used for recycling. So you first you have to press these uh, bottles, bottle caps into something very flat, 
you can do it using you know, an iron. And once you do this, you have to cut them into these small filaments. And these filaments are to be fed in the shredder, which is called EcoSet. The shredder then uh, gives you these pellets, which are very fine particles of plastic. Right. And then you insert these pellets into another uh, device. Yeah. Right. And once you do that, this is called an extruder. So this extruder, it heats up to 200 degrees Celsius. So what, it melts the plastic or? It melts the plastic and then it transforms it into a filament as you can see here. Okay. And the filament comes out at this end and then there is a, it, it just, uh, it gets collected on this uh, device. And the interesting part about this machine is that uh, you can generate uh, eight meters of filament per hour. So on an average for this cup, for example, you need uh, two meters of filament. So the equivalent of eight meters is four cups like these. Because after this is linked to a, a 3D printer. It's linked to a 3D printer, right. which is called Scalar Excel. And that 3D printer is also very interesting because it's an evolving printer. It's not just one printer. So for example, today they sell this printer and a year later there's a new technology or new addition to it. So you can just get that uh, peculiar uh, addition and you can mount on this printer and you evolve that printer. So that's right. something very unique to this uh, entire system. And now why did they choose uh, bottle caps? Can you do it with other types of plastic or just bottle uh, caps? Only bottle caps because they have certain properties. So these bottle, the plastic used in these bottle caps, the high density polyethylene, it retains its structure even after uh, going through this uh, shredding and uh, extruding process. So the filament you get here, the plastic you get here, is almost the same as the plastic here. So it doesn't undergo any change. So whatever products you create out of this, they continue to be, remain as sturdy, as stable as this plastic cap. And this uh, particular machine is going to be demonstrated at Maker's Fair in the first week of June in Paris for three days. And it's been founded by uh, Nicolas Rambeau and Clément Bofis. Uh, and this Paris. is perhaps the future of recycling. Maybe we're going to be recycling our own plastic at On home very your soon. your study table. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that's it from us here at Tech24. Do stay with us here on Plaza 24.